Both on his father's side and his mother's side. The second honorific title, if those who are familiar with the works of the Grand Chair, he is the Muhammad Deen, he is the reviver of the Deen of Islam. As Sayyid Muhammad Deen Abu Muhammad, Abu Muhammad was his nickname. As Sayyid Muhammad Deen. Abu Muhammad Al Jilani. Al Jilani here denotes the region he held from. Although he also holds the epithet of Al Baghdadi, denoting that he practiced and he preached in Baghdad Sharif. But in the year 470 years after our holy Rasul, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hijrah to Medina. In the year 1077, in Ramadan, in the Persian province of Gilan, south of the Caspian Sea in Iran, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani was born. And just to add, 100 years before the emergence, you could say, 370 years after our Rasul Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made hijrah, there was another man, one of the greatest Sufi poets this Ummah has ever seen, Al-Junaid al-Baghdadi, radiyallahu ta'ala an wa rahmatullahi alayhi wa And it is well mentioned that Junaid baghdadi predicted the coming of a Shaykh Abu Qabij, that he will be born in Persia, and his reign will be held in Baghdad Shari. And this was none other than a Shaykh Abu Qadir Jilani Qaddas Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the other two titles that are given to him is the Al Hasani, Al Hasani wa Al Hussein. Direct lineage from Sayyiduna Al Hussein wa Sayyiduna Al Hasan radiallahu ta'ala on his father's side and his mother's side. You all most likely have heard. There, alhamdulillah, there are countless materials that have been translated into English for the youth, for the English-speaking people. Regarding the miracles that occurred during the lifetime of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qaddas Allah Aziz, one of the first miracles, you could say, among the first miracles was that a Shaykh, the Grand Shaykh, when he was only a baby, would not suckle during the day in the month of Ramadan. He would not suckle from his mother during the month of Ramadan. And we look at the, the zeal of obedience that he showed his mother. When his mother, I'm just summarizing it up just to give you a brief summary. That his mother sewed beneath his armpit and kept well hidden some money that his mother had kept for him for his studies. To facilitate and to finance his studies. He was stuck by thieves. And the thieves looked at him in old rag clothes and discarded him in a corner. They thought that he was of somewhat of a frivolous nature. Not important because of his poor nature that he had, the clothing. But then when the thief, the, the, one of the thieves asked him, are you carrying anything with you? 
He replied, yes, my mother gave me some money and it's beneath my armpit. It's sewn within my own cloth. To this they laughed. They thought that the boy, the boy was joking. But they found what they found. They found money beneath them. This, his zeal of truth that he showed to his mother. It's also reported that his mother asked for a glass of milk. And he was at a young age. A young age indeed. He went down and he took some milk. By the time he went to his mother, his mother was fallen asleep. And these were nights in Iran, near the Caspian Sea, of extreme coldness. The nights were extremely cold. In those days, there was no central heating. You would only have to light a fire during the day. During the night, you had to deal with it. He approached his mother's bed. His mother was sleeping. And he stood there with the milk. He didn't want to wake up his mother or interrupt her sleep. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jirani stood there till the morning. He stood there till the morning until his mother woke up. And his mother woke up. And she was startled to see her son shaking and shivering. And it's reported her mother, his mother, radiallahu ta'ala an, anha says, that the glass was stuck to his hand because of the coldness. And he asked, and she asked, Oh my son, why are you standing there? He replied, you asked for a cup of milk. And I came up to see, but you were asleep. I'm waiting here to see you awake, oh mother. Allah. 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 It just goes to show the level of obedience that the Grand Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda Sallahu Sirrahul Aziz had. His obedience and his love towards his mother for verily Jannah lies beneath the, our mother's feet. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani 18 years old, he left for Baghdad. But he was not allowed to enter Baghdad. He was not allowed to enter Baghdad. For the ulama at Tasawwuf have said that Khidr alayhi salam stopped him from going into Baghdad. Stopped him and told him to go into the wilderness to purify his own nafs. And it's reported that he spent 25 years, 25 years wandering like a dervish in the jungles of Baghdad. Eating from berries, eating from wild berries and wild fruits, surviving on little water. It is said when later he opened up his own school house in Baghdad Sharif, he would relate some stories about the about the about the events that he went through, the struggles that he encountered. He even said that he felt Shaytan al Rajim grab him by the throat and strangling him to death, suffocating him. But we have to understand something, we do not take this literally. Shaytan came and put his hands on the blessed neck of a shaykh to strangle him. It goes to show the level of struggle Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani went through to purify his nafs, to purify his heart. And indeed, Wallahi Azim, this was the only message a Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani came with. This was the only message that the Grand Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani preached to the people for 40 years. And bear in mind that Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Aziz, did not start preaching in public until he was 50 years old. 50 years old. And he preached for 40 years until the age of 90 where he passed over to Allah subhanahu wa on his, on his deathbed, his, one of his sons, Abdul Wahab. Abdul Wahab. I'm seeing some people look at me with their eyes open like this. Abdul Wahab? <laughs> Not the legend. I'm talking about Abdul Wahab, his son. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani's son. Was standing there witnessing the pain that Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda Sallahu Sibrahul Aziz was going through. He thought it was pain. So his, his son started to cry and his father, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, looked at his son and he said, Yes, oh my son, why are you crying? What is making you cry? His son says, it hurts, my, it hurts my feelings and it melts my heart to see you in such pain. <coughs> Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda Sallahu Sibra Bin Aziz replied, He said, oh my son, it is not pain that I am enduring. 
but I am being immersed and rolled over within the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was still feeding his beloved with knowledge and more ilm and more ilm. It was so difficult for him to take, hence the rolling across the head. A Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani was so much tested even just before his blessed soul left the realm of this world. Someone appeared to him, Shaytan in disguise, presented towards him, to him, a goblet of gold filled with red wine. Shaytan said, O oh Shaykh, you have succeeded and Allah is well pleased with you. And he has given me to give you this cup of wine for you to drink before you leave this dunya. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalani Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aziz looked at, this, looked at this individual whom he knew very well that it was Shaytan disguised in, a beauty, in beautiful attire. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalani Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aziz said, it, wine has been made unlawful for my Nabi, Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this world and I am still in the dunya. Get away from me, O Shaytan al rajim And he sought refuge in Allah from Shaytan the Accursed at that very moment. To this, Shaytan appeared to him in all his ugly form and said, O Shaykh, it is only but your knowledge that you have been saved from me today. This was his final test. Shaytan tried to fire, fire some fitna in the direction of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. But a Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aziz replied, No, it is not my knowledge, but it is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Look at the humility, look at the level of knowledge. You see, just by saying this statement, we have to understand a few things. Just by saying this statement, it is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is a grand level of understanding of Sufism of mysticism, of the soul, knowledge of the unseen. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aziz would repeatedly, during the mornings, he would lecture the people with tafsir, the Qur'an, and hadith. He would be lecturing the people in the morning with tafsir and hadith, but throughout the entire day, the afternoon and the evening, all he would be talking about would be purifying the hearts. How do we purify the hearts? An aspect of which today, which is alien to many of us today, which is very much alien to us today, for us today. It's a shame that this mosque is not full, but Alhamdulillah, Allah guides whomsoever He wills. But it goes to show how much of us here in this dunya are addicted to the dunya. <coughs> addicted, we have become slaves. Many of our brothers and sisters have become slaves of this world. Being in the service of this dunya, how many times you look towards his books, Al-Fatih al-Rabbani, Jala al-Khawatir, Khamsa Ashar al-Maktuban, all these books of a Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, repeatedly in every single page of his discourses that he gave to the public, were about the dunya and it was about the heart. For if you do not protect your heart, you will not attain salvation the way you must attain it in this dunya and in the hero. So we look to some of the hadith. Our Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is reported as having said, those hearts are getting very rusty. Those hearts are getting very rusty. And the polish they need for these hearts is the recitation of the Quran. The recitation of the Quran. The polish these hearts need is the remembrance of death and the attendance at sessions of dhikr. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is being mentioned, we have to be there present in those in those gatherings. My dear brothers in Islam, the hearts it gets so rusty. Unless the, owner, unless the owner of that heart takes care and he takes corrective measures described by the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad if he does not take correct measures 
the heart will become completely dark. It will, come, it will become more than a black rock on the darkest of nights in the desert. This is what happens to the individual's heart. It will become dark because of this remoteness from the nur. Remoteness from nur. It will turn back because of his love for the dunya and his attachment that he shows to the dunya. And if someone who is so attached with the dunya, worldly pursuits, when I say dunya, I mean materialism. Slaves of this materialistic world. If you hold such an attachment to these things, and at the same time, you do not practice pious restraint, you do not suppress your lower desires, you do not practice wara. What happens? The dunya starts to control your heart. The dunya starts to control your heart. So, whatever is halal, you indulge more upon halal. Whatever is haram, you indulge, you, you indulge more upon haram. That person, he loses the ability to discriminate in the process of acquisition. Very difficult for him to discriminate. He loses a complete sense of shame before his law. Now I have extracted, and I quote from the book, Jala al Hawati by a Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, a book. If my young brothers are here, you can get it in the fountain. It's been translated into English. And I took this from the English from Jala al Khawati. Look at the words of a Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, and this is nothing. This is nothing compared to what the book contains. Listen to his words. Just close your eyes and imagine. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al Aziz before us. And he is addressing you. He is addressing me. He is addressing everyone. Oh my people, take instruction from your Prophet and clear the rust from your hearts through the treatment he has prescribed for you. If one of you had a disease and some physician prescribed a remedy for it, your life would not be comfortable until you applied that remedy. Be attentive to your Lord in your private moments and when you are in public situations. Set him before your eyes so that you seem to see him. For even if you do not see him, surely he does see you. He who practices remembrance of Allah with his heart is the true practitioner of the dhikr. He is the dhab. While anyone who does not remember him with his heart, he is no dhab. The tongue is the ghulam of the heart. Look at the words of the shaykh. The tongue is the ghulam, the page boy, the servant of the heart. And the tongue is its subordinate. My brothers in Islam, Allahu Akbar Khabira, when we look to the works of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jidani, Imam Abdul Hamid Muhammad Al Ghazali, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, all they ever concentrated about was the heart. Beg, we beg to ask the question, why? Why always the heart? Because it is the heart in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at. It is not your, your arms or your legs or your hands. He looks at your hearts and then he looks at your deeds. Purifying one's heart. Purifying one's heart is a critically important matter for all mu'mini, For all the believers. As the Quran, Al Karim, and the Sunnah of our Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us, this is because the state of one's heart, my dear brothers in Islam, has a very real effect upon the way we perceive knowledge. It affects the way we perceive, we understand knowledge, and how it is manifested in our actions. Because if you practice upon your knowledge and you purify your heart, it will manifest in your hands. It will manifest in the way you speak to people. It will manifest in the feet. Your feet will take you by itself to places in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased. This is what the heart will do for you. When one's heart is sound, if the heart is sound, knowledge and understanding will benefit you so
so much in ways you could never imagine. It will illuminate your nafs. And this is what the Grand Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Fatta Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had always emphasized upon him. He looked to one story, an event. Allahu Akbar, what a great person he was. Radiallahu ta'ala. One woman came up to him with, his, with her little boy. And she said, Ya Shaykh, look after my son. He's in your, he's in your care. Do as you please with him. Just make him a good boy. Teach him tarbiyah. Teach him good manners. <coughs> so Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani put him on a strict regime. <coughs> Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani was sitting on the chair eating chicken. This was, this was the time in which he reached the state of ghawd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated his status in his dunya. He was eating chicken. And after he finished eating the chicken, he threw the bones to the boy. And the boy was sitting down, uh, hardly, hardly any attire, and looking all scruffy and poor. And the boy was eating the bones. So he would do this nearly every day. And then all of a sudden, on one occasion, the boy's mother entered, entered the palace of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she was, she was so shocked to see the state of her own son. And she said, Ya Abdul Qadir, what are you doing to my son? How are you clothing him? You are clothing, you, you clothed yourself with fine robes, but yet you yet to dress my son properly? And you are sitting there eating chicken and you are throwing bones at my son as if my son is a dog. Come on my son, let's go home. As soon as the son was about to get up, the son pointed at Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, gestured to his mom, mom look at Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. She looked at Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani took a bone, placed the bone on the table, placed his hand over the bone and said, قُلْ ma haq." He said, say what is the truth. As soon as he said that to the bone, the chicken became alive like a real chicken. The chicken started to flutter its wings. And the chicken said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, wa Abdul Qadir Waliullah. Subhanallah. La ilaha illallah. These are great people, great individuals. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. And Abdul Qadir is the friend of Allah. To this, the woman said, I'll leave my son with you. And she walked out. You see, inna fi ibni Adam mubha. Verily, there's, there's a lump of flesh. There's a lump of flesh in the son of Adam. If it's good, the whole body will be good. But if it's corrupt, the whole body will become corrupt. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashara ila sadr. He pointed to his chest and he said, Ala wa hiya al Beware, it is only the heart that this is a lump of flesh. If this is corrupt, you will be corrupt. If this is, if this is corrected, you will be corrected. The entire limbs will be corrected. And this was the mission of a Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Qadda sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The spiritual heart, my dear brothers in Islam, it has been likened to a mirror. You know, if you leave a mirror for a couple of weeks or months, you scatter water upon the mirror, and you leave it there to dry upon the mirror, what will happen to the mirror? The mirror will start to rust. The mirror starts to change color. The mirror starts to um, contain certain blemishes and certain distortions that if you were to look at your reflection, your reflection is as well distorted because you can't see from it. It's rusted. It's no use. You've got to chuck it away. The reflection will be in accordance to the state of the mirror, my dear brothers in Islam. In the same way, spiritual ailments, contaminants that contaminate our hearts, arrogance, takabur, jealousy, hasad, vain conceit, rajab, vain conceit, Hiding, your, hiding these feelings of self-praise. You love yourself so much but you hide it from the people. It's called Ujjah. All these, all these contaminants, 
all these diseases, these ailments in our hearts, if it plagues our hearts, our hearts start to darken. Many of us, when we read the Quran al kareem it's very difficult for us to shed a tear. Our tears are very hard to fall down. It's very hard to come from our cheeks. We make dua Laylatul Qadr for, for, for Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan. Some are crying, are blessed with this crying. Some hearts are so hard that they cannot shed a tear. What is the state of those individuals when Malikul Maut comes and grabs your soul at the time of death? Leaving this dunya with such a dark and black heart? The reason why our hearts are so black is because we have, we have started to implement in our lives this certain ideology that we shouldn't come to the mosque. No need to come to the mosque. Come for Jum'ah. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ حُبَّ الدُّنْيَا رَقْسُهُ فِي خَطِيئًا The love of the dunya is the root of all evil. It is for this reason that one must couple one's devotion to the Islamic sciences, especially to the sciences of the Qalb, the sciences of the Sawwuf. We have to familiarize ourselves with these sciences. It is lacking among the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah today. Many of us have knowledge. Many scholars have knowledge. But they fail to implement this knowledge into A'mal. And they tend not to um, improvise upon the qualities and states of the heart. We look to the stains of Imam al Nawawi. Imam al Nawawi, radiallahu ta'ala an wa rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam al Nawawi was a great muhaddith, scholar of this ummah. He was a great scholar, Imam al Nawawi, a Shafi'iyu, a muqallid of the Shafi'i fiqh. What did he say? Listen to what Imam al Nawawi advised us. These were people who truly knew how to look after their hearts. These were the people who, who showed more importance to the sciences of, of the heart than to any other science. He says, and I quote, Imam al-Nawawi rahmatullahi Purify your hearts. Purify your hearts the way land is purified for cultivation. Just like you purify the earth. Just like you purify the land for cultivation. Purify your hearts. Another great scholar. Another great scholar and tabi'i, successor of the companions of Rasulullah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wa'is al-Qarni, Wa'is al-Qarni, radiyallahu ta'ala an wa rahmatullahi alayhi. He said with such assiduity, such zeal, keep watch over your heart. He would always constantly remind the people the first thing that he would say after rendering his salams to the people. He would say, Uwais al Qarni. Allahu Akbar, learn these words, learn these names. These are great names. For indeed, you never know. If you were to take this name in your heart, in your qabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have raham upon your soul. Mentioning such names, mentioning such names, Allahu Akbar, Uwais al Qarni, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He would say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He would say, Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Alayka bi qalbik. That's the first thing he would say. He would say, watch over your heart. He would remind the person to watch over his heart before he would utter something which was of no concern to him. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, look at these people. Look at these people. We have to really get to know our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really watch over our hearts. On the day of Qiyamah, I was reading this in Imam Ghazali's Mukashaf al that how much of us pray and how much of us read the Quran and how much service are we giving really to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you start reading a bit more, the more you approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It said here in the Bab al Khawf, before I end, and I end on this hadith, and end the inshallah. That Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels, since He created them, there are angels that are in the seven heavens and they are in the state of prostration. They are in the state of sujood. 
and their beds are made out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they can't come on Qiyamah, and when they, are, when they see the day of Qiyamah, when the day of Qiyamah arrives, they will raise their heads on the day of Qiyamah, these angels, since they were created. Since they were created, they've been in a state of frustration. On the day of Qiyamah, it will be only then where they will raise their heads. Look what they will say. They will look at Allah and they will say, Ya Rabb, Subhan. They will say, Oh our Lord, glory be to you. Glory be to you. Ma abadana ka They will say, Oh Lord, we have not worshipped you the way you must be worshipped. They have spent their all their days and all their nights in sujood since they were created. And this is what they say. Subhanak ma abadna ka haqqa ibadati. Glory be to you, we have not worshipped you the way you must be worshipped. وَكَذَلِكَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْمَجِيدِ يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ They fear Allah from above and they do as they have been commanded. يَعْنِي لَا يَعْسُمَ اللَّهَ تَرْفَتَعِينَ They do not disobey Allah even for a split second, even for a twinkle of an eye. Where do we stand in this? How much, how much, how much time of our lives are we truly giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much time are we giving in coming to listen, to listening to the Imams, to the ulama speak and give knowledge and give knowledge? We have reached a day and age in which knowledge has come knocking on your door. <coughs> in my days, in the days of Imam Ijaza, we had to travel. There was no YouTube. There was nothing online. We didn't even have internet. The only thing that probably I, had, I didn't have, but people had, were the rich people with their blocks of mobile phones. They had to hold their mobile phones with two hands. We had no knowledge in our days. We had to travel distances to find knowledge. Knowledge has come to you. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, not saying it's a bad thing, it's also a good thing, YouTube. You get many good videos for those who are able to decide whether that is good or bad. Knowledge is at your door. Darses are being given in the mosques. English speakers are being provided. Our committee worked tirelessly to find English speakers. And they're throwing English speakers in your face. But yet, many of us are so addicted to this dunya that we are throwing this, dunya, this, this ill behind our backs. Because of love for the dunya, this is the truth. And nothing but the truth. I'm not going to stand here in the God of Allah telling lies. And I end on one more thing. Mentioning Mukashafat al Imam Ghazali says that in, in Misr, in Misr, there was a grand sheikh, a very notable sheikh, who used to sit and eat and talk with the dignitaries of Egypt, of Tunis, of Saudi, of many countries. He used to sit with such royalty. One morning, he didn't come for dhas, he didn't come for morning class. His students were perturbed. They wanted to know if the sheikh was good, was okay. What happened? One of the students went out of the mosque, went to the house of the sheikh, knocked on the door. The sheikh's son opened the door and, they, and he asked, where is your father? He didn't come for class. We are worried. His son, his, the sheikh's son said, he went to the mosque. We saw him go. He's in the mosque. So the student got even more scared. He was wondering whether the sheikh had been kidnapped. So he ran back to the mosque and one of the students was sitting there in the mosque crying and making toba. One student asked that student who was making toba, why are you crying at the top of your voice? A student. How old would you find a student? 16, 20, 25? He's in his youth, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. The student asked him, why are you wailing out aloud in the God of Allah? What has happened? He said, our sheikh is in the toilets. He is cleaning the toilet. Our sheikh that sits with royalty, he is in the toilets, scrubbing the toilets. When I went there, I tried to stop him from cleaning the toilets out of respect. 
out of, out of respect that I have for my shaykh, he stopped me and he said, go away and leave me. I am reminding my soul who my soul is. I am reminding myself where my soul comes from. And then the shaykh said and quoted the words of Sufyan al-Thawri. Sufyan al-Thawri rahmatullahi alayhi says, listen to this, and I end my talk. And I end my speech. The Shaykh quoted the words of Tufyan al and said, You are but a dirty drop of sperm. And in the end, you will be a dirty, rotten, filthy corpse. So in between, you are the filth. You are carrying this filth today. So sometimes we need to take time out and we need to remind ourselves, remind our nafs who we are. When you think big of yourself, you're bigger and more superior than your Muslim brother. You're all the same, my brother. We're all the same. But the most noble of you is the one who fears Allah the most. And the one who feared Allah the most. After, after all the, the Salaf al-Saliheen was a Shaykh Abu Qadir Jilani Qadr And this is the mission he came with. To look after your hearts. To look after your souls. وما علينا إلا فلا